Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to be about osmosis, which is how water crosses the membrane into living cells. Keep in mind that osmosis is just like diffusion. It's, it's a word that we use to describe a special case of diffusion. In this case, it's the movement of water, which is the solvent in the system, into or out of a cell in response to solutes like dissolved salts and other ions. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane. Uh, because the cell membrane blocks the movement of some solutes, like salt ions, the solute concentrations cannot achieve equilibrium. Remember, if this was plain old diffusion, the sodium and chlorine ions would diffuse out of the cell. Um, let me see if I get this showing here. All right, got my pointer. So if if this membrane here was not semi-permeable and the sodium and chlorine ions could freely move in and out, then we wouldn't really have osmosis because what would happen is we'd just have the diffusion of these ions in here. But these ions can't get across the membrane. All right, They are blocked by the semi-permeability of the um, phospholipid bilayer, so they can't get in or out. So this means that there's less water inside the cell and more water outside the cell. So you can think of it as there's a high concentration of water outside and a lower concentration of water on the inside in the cytoplasm. That's because these ions are taking up space that normally would be taken up by the water. So what's going to happen is, by the process of osmosis, water molecules are going to move across the membrane by, by diffusion into the cytoplasm. And that's going to cause the cell's volume to swell. So when we have an environment where a cell is placed in pure water, like distilled water, the cytoplasm has its own salts concentration. So it's going to pull water in from the environment and the cell is going to swell and potentially burst. Now if we reverse the situation and we put a cell that has a lot of water on, in its cytoplasm in a very salty environment, okay, just the opposite is going to happen. Osmosis is going to pull water out of the cytoplasm and this is going to cause the cell to shrink or shrivel. Okay. Now, we can use this idea of osmosis to predict what's going to happen to different cells if we place them in different environments. So here we have a beaker of pure water, here we have a beaker of very salty water, and here we have a beaker of water that is in equal saltiness to the cytoplasm of the cell. And we're going to put an animal cell, three identical animal cells, in each of these environments. Now what do you think is going to happen? Well, in the pure water, okay, the cell is going to swell. Because, remember, the animal cell's cytoplasm has a concentration of salts that's higher than the concentration in the environment. So there's more water on the outside, so water is going to diffuse in and the cell is going to swell. In the salty environment, the animal cell is going to shrink or shrivel because there is a lot more solute or salts on the outside than on the inside. So the water is going to move by osmosis out of the cytoplasm and cause the cell to lose volume. And in an environment where it's balanced, we're not going to get any change. So... Pure water environments are going to be swelling environments, salty environments are going to be shriveling environments, and environments that are equal are going to be in equilibrium. Now we have words for these, okay? Hypotonic environments are environments that cause cells to swell. Hypertonic environments are environments that cause cells to shrivel, and isotonic environments are environments that are in balance with the cell. Now, of course, in animal cells, we want an isotonic environment because that's the environment where the cells are going to stay the correct size and they're neither shrinking nor swelling. Now, human blood cells exposed to different environments are going to respond in exactly the same way. So I found a video on YouTube of some, um, of some cells, some blood cells. So let's watch them. Okay, here we have an isotonic solution. We got one, two, three, four, five different blood cells. Okay, they're balanced, so notice that they're not shrinking or swelling. Ignore these guys up here. I think those are just reflections or air bubbles. Okay, now we're in a hypertonic environment, and you can see that these very same blood cells are starting to shrivel and shrink a little bit. You can see how their, their cell membrane borders are becoming wrinkled. Okay, and we're going to switch in a few minutes back to an isotonic environment. Okay, now we're back in an isotonic environment, and notice how they're plumping up again and returning to their original size. And finally, we place them in distilled water, okay, which is a very, very hypotonic environment. And watch what happens to these poor blood cells in, in distilled water. Oh, there goes one, two, three, 
and done. You'll notice in that video that the pressure of osmosis pulling water into the cells exceeded the cell membrane strength and the cells burst. And of course, that's going to kill the cell. All right, I think that's it. Oh, no, we don't. Here we go. Now, how do plant cells respond to osmotic pressures? Okay, plant cells don't swell and burst because they have cell walls that prevent this. All right, so if you place a, for example, some plant cells like the celery in a hypotonic environment, like plain water, the cells are going to be nice and rigid and plump and filled up with water. Their vacuoles are going to take in water, their cytoplasm is going to take in water, and they're going to press against the cell walls, and we're going to get lots and lots of turgor pressure. Same thing in an isotonic environment, although maybe not quite as firm. But if you place them in a hypertonic environment, like really salty water, the osmotic pressure is going to reverse. Uh, water is going to flood out of the cells, and the cells are going to shrivel. And when they lose their pressure, they become very, very wimpy and very flaccid, and they're going to um, kind of, with the word for this is wilting. Okay, so we're going to say that they wilt when we place them in salt water. So if you have celery at home in your refrigerator and it's gotten all flaccid and all, all wilted because of dehydration, just recut the ends, put it in some water, and it'll plump right back up. Thanks for listening. The next video cast is going to be about facilitated diffusion.